Alright, let's put the other battery in, this will be the third one now. Yeah, see those um, dangerous looking fungi, look. Took a picture of it. Anyway, here I am down at, uh, in Longwood, there's a stream that we passed earlier, rushing down now, I'll be heading straight down to Cheddar. Oh, beautiful little oasis type places this, with all the ferns and lichens, living in harmony and health. The little troll bridge over there, and these hanging ferns and lichens. It's a beautiful little area, isn't it? You can smell the garlic, you know. I've stood here. I can smell the garlic. Somewhere round here is a pothole. Somewhere round here. You normally fence it off. The plaque, Longwood Nature Reserve. Yeah, carpets of bluebells and ramsons and wild, also known as wild garlic. Yeah, intoxicated with absolute beautiful fragrance and smells and aromas. I can smell the wild garlic already. Now I'm going across the trip trap bridge. Like I've done loads of times. Looks like it is a bit thin, doesn't it? A lot of light getting in. And this moss. Beautiful, isn't it? Like a little beach there, look. Very beautiful, I love this place. It's nice to have had a, well, quite a, three or four months away, maybe five or six months, allowing it to, them to prune or whatever they've had to do. I'm glad they haven't touched that lovely mossy lichen stuff. That would be terrible to bring these down because th this is um, the culture, the ecology of the wood if you like here. But you I can see they have done a bit of pruning. That one there. It does feel like it's been cleared a bit but in the winter you can't always tell because it will be bare. This is Sheila, the 18th of March 2022, three days before spring. People come to bathe their feet here, children and dogs come to paddle and to cool their feet. It's hypnotising. It goes all the way down there. It's under the control of the A water board, which there's something behind those railings to do with them. And there's some sort of water station over that way that, which we don't can't normally get to. I bet you could if you wanted to. But look at the trees, they always look so fragile and brittle this time of year, don't they? Yeah, I don't know what goes on in there, but it's, it always looks overgrown. They put a new gate on every now and again, and a new padlock. I don't, never really know what, what that structure is. I mean, there's steps going up there. and It's a weird looking structure, isn't it? I spent a water board man 
we could tell you what that's all about in there. Could be a pot. Oh, secret cavern. Quite lovely though, isn't it? Let's just look at the trees. Soaking up a little bit of heat at last. I'm expecting it to be extremely muddy this way. Now if you didn't want to do the muddy route, you can climb up the steps and go along the top path. Yeah, they've cut one down here, look. I've seen this bone dry, by the way. Goes underground now. But there is a caving system here. And, uh, but if you wanted to, um, that's the next one, isn't it? If you don't want to experience extreme mud and squelch, it's best to go up in a minute. You don't want to experience extreme mud and squelch. You go up those steps over there. Which I'll do next time I come. People might say, why don't you do up now? Because the next time you come it'll be drier. Yeah, but I think most of the cutting might have been done down here. Look at that. Isn't that a lovely scene with those lovely green mossy trees there. And the green coming out with the snowdrops and the bluebells. Uh, the, the wild garlic, I mean. What a lovely scene this is. Got their woolly jumpers on. That's what I always think when they're mossed up like that. Got their woolly jumpers on. Aren't you? You're not stupid trees, are you? It might not be as boggy as I think, because they do tend to divert the water off a bit. It might not be too bad, actually. It's a nice stroll through, and later I'll be up there in the sheep field. Eating my picnic on the way back. That's a big mound there, isn't it? You wonder if that was some sort of camp site in the past. Don't you? It's a beautiful view. I'm going to turn off for a second, folk. Come back. Back on again. Hobbit land, that's what it reminds me of, this sort of place. With the mosses, the peace, the quiet. It's one of these lovely, lovely little places to come. Uh, I say it every time, one day I'm going to explore up that valley. I am. One day. I need a day out here, really, to do stuff like that. Not a day, but just concentrate on Longwood. Ash dieback. A lot of these look like they're ash dieback, but maybe they're just going to leave them. Yeah, see that's a well-defined path now. It looks like somebody's using this path, doesn't it? That's a lot more defined than usual. Don't you think? A lot more defined. Like I said, I'm going to leave it for another time, but it's probably a good time to do it. It is the winter. Little tiny pass, little cantock. Could be a deer made that path. Somebody's provided a nice trough for them so they can have a drink. I've sat right on the top there before now. Yeah, I'm not going to do it today. Yeah, that's an old point that is. <laughs> like I said, the water that we saw a minute ago is underground at the moment. We probably won't see it again now. Occasionally, I think when it's heavy rain, these are areas where the water comes.
You know, next time we come, we'll start by going up, up the top. You see, only a couple of weeks ago, it was getting dark by four o'clock, and I wouldn't be anywhere like that where I am now. I'd be nearly back at Shedder. That's the nice thing about the lighter evenings, and of course it will be dark by the time I get home, seven o'clock, half seven, it'll be dark, before I even get back on the bus, um, as soon as, uh, no, when I get on the bus it'll still, still be light, depending on what one I get on, and then, um, It does look very untidy though, doesn't it? This is a natural wood. Stuff falls and rots. I think they'd just come up here really if any of the big trees were looking dodgy. I think. Of course it's called Today on Telly Later, which I'm not really interested in. I don't trust charities. A lot of charities, they give their money to people who make weapons or... <sighs> this is what's called Red Nose Day and it's supposed to be a, something to do with children. But, um, I don't know. I'm always very suspicious about those sort of things, to be quite honest. I mean, if, if, it's, if they do, I suppose they've got to prove that they uh, raise money. Well, that looks all a bit haphazard, doesn't it? I wouldn't say that's safe. Those stones just piled there like that, near the pothole. Very haphazard, I would have thought. Yeah, they go, and apparently that's as big as a double-decker bus in height down there when you get down there. Over and out a minute. Such a peaceful wood when there's no wind. This place is dead still. Tomorrow it could be filled with people though. Children, exploring, having a nature walk. Laughter of children. It's good, the wood likes it. But at the moment, it's all mine. It's peaceful, a couple of birds twittering. The sun's starting to fade now. I took some great photos. Like I said, next time I come back, it won't be for six weeks, I would have thought. End of April, beginning of May. So still, so calm. Do you know, I was just thinking of uh, that war going on in the Ukraine. They've got, they must have beautiful places, you know. I've seen birds having to fly away in total panic when the bombs land. They showed a f couple of shots, you know, of the bombing. <laughs> Dogs running wild because they've got, they've been scared feeding off corpses no one's been able to retrieve loads of bodies some of them are buried in buried in the rubble it's unbelievable really because that country was doing so well it really was it was very like us dressed like us Our cult, you know very similar that's what I mean, I know it's upsetting whoever it is, but it's just, like just, they just look like us. The kids, everything. 
I hate it. I hate the thought of it. Well, I'm so far not, so I haven't been able to sleep properly because I keep thinking as I'm lying in my warm bed, people are suffocating underground and people are going to be threatened with chlorine gas. They've deliberately gone for the people. I don't like the thought of it really, but I know, I just imagine, I mean, they mentioned women sort of my age who've got the, the China collection. Well, it was one woman still trying to protect her, her ornaments, her things. As the bombs start to get closer and closer. And there would be places where they would walk and hear the birds and see the trees. It's awful, it's so evil what's going on out there. Because it's it's deliberately bombing innocent people. Like in Syria as well. Aleppo. Flattened. They haven't got to Kiev yet properly. They've started to bomb a few residential places. But of course everyone's holding back because it's not like the Second World War. This one involves, could involve nuclear and the whole bloody world would be wiped out. To be quite honest. Not everything, but a lot would survive, but it wouldn't, most humans would be the end of us. We'd be going back to the Stone Age. All the infrastructure would be wiped out. Everything. It would be a very, very brutal world as well, whatever emerged from it. It would be very, very brutal. And um, I think I'll go up there as well. All my life since the 50s, when the year I was born, the UK lit, let off its first nuclear testing bomb in 1952. Everyone already knew what it could do because the Americans dropped it on Japan to end the war. But then the Cold War came into operation. There was always the threat. The threat of a nuclear war. And I grew up as a child knowing the symbol of ban the bomb. Then it was the cruise missiles. I can, I've seen cruise missiles up close when I lived in Reading. The cruise missiles used to be carried through the streets. Well, on trucks. Great big things. To Harwell. Greenham Common protests in the 70s. Yeah, ban the bomb. I wonder if that's a real owl hooting there. So I grew up with all that. That sort of fear in the background, if you like. Of course, when I was young, there was what's called the Cuban Missile issue in the 60s. I think it was 62, 63, when President Kennedy was alive. When that we were all on heightened alert then. That was a false alarm apparently. Someone said it was geese. Got picked up and somebody thought it was nuclear weapons. And then we had a period of calm I think. Everyone seemed to be sort of getting on. There, there were wars all the time breaking out around the world in one way or another. But not nuclear wars. Skirmishes. Look at Croatia and all that out there. They were all fighting each other at one point. And then we had all those Arab wars. In Iraq, Afghanistan. We had all that going on. Once again, no one thought it could get all nuclear. But President Putin, from Russia, actually threatened us with nuclear weapons. 
So we can't literally go in physically and help the Ukrainians because that's the threat. He will use his bombs and wipe us out. And in so doing so, he will wipe himself out. A war of attrition gone crazy. So anyway, that's ending the walk on a bit of a sombre note, everyone. But when I'm in places like this, it's peace, quiet, and beauty. It just makes you think of, this is how it was for other people once in their homes. And we could, it could be awful for us, yeah, it's not over, is it? It's all over. Right then, so at the end of that little walk, I'm just starting to feel a bit peckish. I need my cheese and stuff. Somebody up there, I can see. Somebody up there, that's the way I could have come down that way, but I I came through there. So folks, I'm going up the crooked lane, up to Sheep Farm. Long Sheepfield, I call it. That's my name for it. It's not really called that, but I call it because it's near Longwood. And it is a long field. I'm not going to cross the open, but today. It's a bit windy. Now I'm going to go past the tree at Piney Slates Farm and then from there we can see. I don't think the cows will be out yet. Piney Slates, but you never know. Right then folks, I'm climbing up there now. By Longwood, I will be back in the spring when it's uh, full of colour. <laughs>